getting everybody. It's your boy so Jackson back with another video, baby. Let's go. I know it's been a week. Uh, some things happened, and I do apologize. It's it's totally my fault. But what I would like to get into, let's keep going. Um, so I'm going to put a put a goal for me and also for you guys. I'm going to try to start doing two days, one and two. Hopefully, we get to 500 subscribers. And when we do, you guys have a choice between two things. I'm either going to dye my hair or I'm going to cut it all off. We're going to do a full on restart. And well, it's up to you guys. So, why don't you go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, all that. YouTube bullshit, <laughs> you feel me? And then let's go ahead and get into a video. So today we're going to react to a video that's called "This Rapper Officially Has Destroyed His Career." So let's go ahead and get into it. I kind of already know who the rapper is. Designer. So it's no secret that the career span of the average rapper is extremely short. And I'm not saying that you can't keep rapping. I'm just saying it's hard to keep the attention of an audience month after month, much less year after year. It's almost like playing in the NFL. Because in the back of your head, you know that there will always be younger, more athletic mm -hmm. players coming in, or you are likely aging past your prime. And for rap- That's tough. <laughs> That's tough. Ezekiel Elliott was a good running back when he first started. That's sad, but it's all right. Rappers, you have to hope that you are making the kind of music that will either pop off and play on the radio, or you exist within a bubble that is your cult following. Because you don't necessarily have to be the most commercially successful to sustain a career where you can keep the lights on. You just have to be smart, not sign stupid deals, and feed your fan base. But mm -hmm. sadly, that's not the case for a lot of these types of rappers. And for some of them, they become what you call in music a one-hit wonder. Think of... Bro, oh, Blueface? I don't care. I didn't like his music in the first place. Rapping off beat was just not it for me, bro. I don't know. I don't know. Yo, I was like, ooh, he's so, he's so popular. Tatiana is the anthem. Tatiana, Tatiana, Tatiana. The only song I actually fucked with that was by Blueface was Bust Down, bro. Not, not Tatiana, it's just, used to write the bus down, now we're bus down, yeah, that song, with, uh, with Offset, that, that shit was fire, bro, that shit was fire, but I don't fuck with none of this other stuff, I'm sorry, it's the truth, I didn't even fuck with the NLE Choppa remix, the Shadow Flow remix, nor any of the Holy Moly song, I didn't fuck with it. It's just the offbeat tempo. He could be good if he was actually on beat all the time. But then setting your career as an offbeat rapper just wasn't it to me, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Guys like Gold Link, Salento, I Love McConan, amongst many, many more. And while you might get your 15 minutes in the sun, Damn, a lot of these rappers are left for the rest of their careers chasing that one hit. Like, dude, at this point, you're really just a regular guy with face tattoos. Go into the studio every single day trying to replicate that lightning in a bottle, and it just doesn't happen. One of the biggest okay. one-hit wonders in recent time was rapper Designer, who caught fire back in 2016 with his smash hit Panda. If you were outside during that time, you would know how lit people got to this damn song. And while some critics were already writing him off as nothing more than a future clone. Oh, I dropped my mic again. 2016 was, uh... Okay, so when the song came out, I was actually in middle school. It was like, I don't know, it was like a couple, it was like two months before we went to summer break going into high school when it actually came out. It was fire. Well, yeah, it was lit. Yeah, everybody got lit to the song, bro. It was at school dances and everything, bro. Everybody. From fucking South Florida all the way to Fresno, California. It was everybody getting lit. It was just straight up. Pedda, pedda, pedda. Oh. Yeah, it's the shit. I mean, for for a good, I say, 
six months until the song just got outplayed by the radio and all that. But I honestly think that it's just because he was, he came in into the mumble rap era when it was dying. The only people that actually made it, ah, nah, I can't even say anybody who made it out of the mumble rap era, every, everybody is still fucking, it, I don't know. Migos have a whole different situation going on. It's because the Southern people that came from the states that the Migos did, they fucking, how do I say it? They, they know exactly what they're talking about. They know exactly how they talk. They know exactly every single word that they say in their songs because they fucking know the language that they speaking. It's like, it's like two different standings, but us Northerners, Yes, I'm gonna give us separate separate things. Northerners or the Northerners, the middle, the middle of the pack, like me, middle of the pack, and Southerners. That's what we got. We got Northerners. That's like all the northern states. So that you know, they speak well, really eloquent. That's why we got things like Harvard and Howard and Brown. Those colleges. Those are the places where. Most English people are associated with, mostly. They talk like this, good sir, madam, all that. And, you know, that's where our prestigious education comes from. But then we have our middle of the pack, our, our middleers. You talk like me. <laughs> I'm just saying you talk, you talk regularly talk like a normal human being but then the southerners have like two different things either you can be like either you can go like this with with good old country accent with um you know we was gonna go down to the barn with billy bob and jim jim brown but uh you know we just we just decided to sit at home and just drink on some moonshine <laughs> and that moonshine was <laughs> real gosh <yeehaw. laughs> you know or you get the, the you know, because I was, I was like a, a mixed kid. I was in California. I was raised in California. And then I was like, kind of shipped back and forth between California and Florida. So you get the, that little, that little twang in it, that little twang in it. Now sound like fucking your age in it. <laughs> then you get that little twang and you start to tell it, you tell it, you tell it. I live with it. It just sound like it just sound like you just mumbling. I don't know. It's a lot. Let's keep let's continue the video. I already rented way too long. Alone, others saw major promise in his music, including Kanye West, who was arguably making some of his best music at the time. This was around the era that he was making The Life of Pablo, and he would even use the chorus from Panza on his song Father Stretch My Hands Part 2, making the designer track even more iconic. With Designer only being around 18 years old at this time, he was absolutely elated when all these different record labels would essentially have a bidding war over him after the success of Panda. Mm -hmm. good music. Mm -hmm. You've been in the studio with Kanye yeah, West. Yeah, yeah. People who have been in the game for years can't say that. Mm -hmm. What was that moment like for you? You sitting, chilling, doing designer. Mm -hmm. Here come Kanye, like, let's turn up. Let's mm -hmm. put this song out. Listen, man, I'm fucking right now. It was crazy. It was crazy. I was in the 11 label bidding war. 11? 11 labels. Are they even 11, 11 labels out there to bid labels, on you? They? 11, 11 <laughs> labels, all of them was going nuts. You feel me? Some of them gave it to me. Some of them was like, ah, let's see our parent to do. And you feel me? Like, they lost. They lost what they did, though. You right. feel me? Like, but I'm in a great, you feel me? In a great squad. He had become a force in the industry overnight. And like I said, one of these people who would take notice was Kanye, who would fly him out to Los Angeles and offer him the opportunity to sign with his record label, Good Music, who had a decent track record when it came to their artists like Kid Cudi and Big Sean. 
John. So Designer was ready to become a part of the Good hmm. Music family, and he specifically chose to sign with them over some other more established labels because he was thinking he would be working closely with Kanye West and saw him as a mentor. This actually seems like a common thought in hip hop, as we all remember when Chance said, I met Kanye West, I'm never going to fail, and then dropped some hot ass garbage. And it's another one. Jesus Christ, bro. I mean, I did like a, like a, I don't know, a personal reaction to the, the failure of Chance the Rapper. And that was, I was going to react to it and put it out to you guys. But, uh, my PC was not recording at the time. I did want not. I did not want to give you guys a disingenuous reaction because that's fake as hell. And I don't want to do that. So <laughs> here we are, watching designer. What? Oh yeah, I was also going to do the uh, the the six fake butt. No, the the six real butts versus the fake the one fake butt. The one that was by Jubilee. Yeah, I was, I was going to do that one. But the same thing happened. So. Yeah. Let's continue. One of those things where it would seem like a highlight of his life and his career to sign with the Good Music record label and work with Kanye directly, but he actually might as well have signed the death certificate on his career. Within months of dropping Panda, Designer would land himself a spot on the 2016 Double XL freshman class, back when it still had some sort of relevance. If it wasn't right. this, if it wasn't nothing else, I, I was gonna be outside still doing music, you feel me? So it was just like, this is my only way and my only way out. Oh, this is a notch on the belt. This is this is history, you know. Yeah, this is dope. Like, yeah, I love it, man. I love this shit. My parents cut you off, but I love this shit. You feel what I'm saying? Like this, this is this is everything. You feel me? Like waking up in the morning, knowing you got something else to do, or something else to lay down. You feel me? Another another melody in your head is it's great. You feel me? Like I love it. Like this was actually a really good year for Double XL, and that's where he would drop this legend. Yeah, I respect it. I respect it. I respect it. Honestly. I do have I do have some good designer songs. It was like when he was falling off. So besides Panda and Timmy Turner, which Timmy Turner will always be a legendary track, even though you can barely hear anything designer is saying for reals. Um But you have Destination. I like Destination a lot, bro. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's been a, it's been a minute since I listened to Designer, but I gotta I gotta look it up. I gotta look up some of the songs, cause if I look at like the names of them, I'm gonna remember. If I look at the names of them, I wanna remember. Okay, so it was Champion. Champions is the one where where it was like everybody was on the track. Kanye West, Gucci Mane, Big Sean, bro, that shit was fire, bro. Listen to it, I'm telling you, it was fucking fire. It was that good. Bro, Outlet? Outlet? Uh, fuck. Outlet, Champions. What else? Up, Up was fire, bro. Even my boy, even one of my homies, bro, he was like, bro, this is Up, Up is my favorite designer song even though he's garbage he's not garbage but it's my favorite designer song hey i respect it uh what else that's three. Oh, zombie walk with uh king savage i thought it was 21 savage at the first at first bro but it's not so yeah so zombie walk outlet uh up Champions, that's four, and then I can give you one more, one more, one more. Oh, uh, destination, bro. I said destination. That's five. You can kind of count price tag, but it's iffy. It, it's shaky. It's shaky. But it, it's some good designer songs out there. It's just the good. I mean, it's the bad that always the good. So. Yeah. Legendary freestyle. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy Turner. Keep it with your ball burner. 
Now at the time, a lot of people were clowning him for this, but it would actually end up being the second biggest song of his career when he right. would eventually release it officially on his debut album, New Honestly, you can't say that he's a one-hit wonder if he posted two full full songs that did multiple record that did multiple hits actually. Like it, it had multiple multiple streams, multiple downloads, except for this song didn't make it on the radio. There's no there's no way that you can't say there's no way that you can say that he's a one-hit wonder after that. You can say that he's a falling off artist, just like uh what's the name? Lil Pump or Smoke, smoke perp is definitely a one hit wonder because I don't, I don't really know any other songs besides a feature that he did on a Denzel Curry song. And Denzel Curry is like one of my all time highest rappers. He's like up there. He's like probably like in the top five. I'm not saying that he's fifth, but he's up there, bro. Top five of my artists, bro. People I listen to every day. Um, but besides Audi, Smoke Perp is just I don't I don't know. I I rather I don't know. But Smoke Perp is definitely a one hit wonder. What else? Uh, sadly, Six Nine is not a one hit wonder, but most of us really do wish that he was. Like a silence of was a one hit wonder. That watching Whip song it just ruined his career, to be honest. Cause it was just so annoying. Watching Whip, now watching Nene, now watching Whip, Whip, Nene, Nene. Ooh, watch me, watch me, ooh, watch me. That shit was so annoying, bro. And then again, again, the radio really does kill a rapper faster than the than the rapper can kill a rapper. <laughs> I'm telling you. So now, now that everything has kind of switched over from the radio stations and there's less and less people actually listening to your radio and that more people are switching to listening to what, like Sirius XM or they're switching over to playing their own music so they can listen to what they like, then it gets, it, it honestly doesn't get the attention that sometimes it deserves, but that's just my take. Let's continue. English. Kanye would even hop on and throw a verse on the tail end of the remix to Timmy Turner. So at this point, Designer had bet on himself and he had won. Speaking of bets, I have to tell you about today's free oh. thing video sponsor, DraftKings. All right. Yep. I'm not getting paid for that, so I'm sorry. It was like no warning either. Infectious positive energy about himself. I'll drop my mic again. At this point, this man designed. So everything was going to plan at this point. This man designer had a very infectious positive energy about himself. <laughs> they made you want him to win. How are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling crazy. You know how I did feel it. I'm trying to chill. I'm trying to not sweat the outfit. You feel me? Like, I'm just going crazy right now. You know how I did feel it. Good, but mainly humble. Keeping my blessings to the top of the skies, you know how it is, man. Much love. At this point, Panda was still a somewhat hot record, and some of his other songs from his debut album were also gaining traction. But this is when the problems with good music really began, as not only designer, but other artists on the label would begin to express their frustration. Yeah, hey, didn't he get in a fight with uh, Kanye? Man, Kanye kicked him off the label. Which kind of also made it harder for him to actually put out and like get recognition for his stuff huh it was never a point where i didn't well kanye kanye is his own person but then i didn't I didn't care what kanye did sometimes honestly i stopped really caring after uh was it graduation year the album or my twisted fantasy something somewhere around there Somewhere around there, it's kind of shaky. The first album I listened to that was by Kanye was High School Dropout. That shit was fire, bro. Bro, when I was working, when I was working, I listened to full albums and 
that album took me back, bro. Bro, it okay. So this this is the way I fell in love with music, right? So it came first with uh, I had three CDs that my mom like basically lended to me when I was younger, and they, I technically still have them in my in like this little pouch. It's like a it's like a pouch, and it's like all the CDs and all that. It's in there. And I remember I have I have I have a three track CD player in the the extra room that we have, and it was Ti's Paper Trail. It was Jamie Fox. I don't remember what album, but it was that. You can be me in the bathroom. We can we can beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it, beat it. Uh, yeah, bro, that was my shit. Bro. It was Jamie Fox. It was the Jamie Fox album. It was uh, it was High School Dropout, and it was Outcast. I don't remember which Outcast uh album it was. I think it was the speak the Speaker Box Love Below album. It was still fire. It didn't matter, but those are, those are, yeah, those are the ones that later on is when I figure out about Lil Wayne, but that's throughout my cousins and all that. I don't, I didn't care about staying up to date to be honest. <laughs> you say you're playing old music. I wouldn't care. It's my music. It's what I'm listening to. But yeah with the way the careers are being handled. Now, what do you think <laughs> about Kanye with everything that's going on with him and, uh, and wearing the Make America Great Again hat and loving Donald Trump? Being Charlemagne and everything. <laughs> I just pray for his best, you know, him to pick the best choices. Like, as a fan, you know, like, I like I was trying to figure out, like, yo, damn, why designer in, in certain conversations or in certain places? And I used to say, man, good music probably not allowing him to move how he, 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 he want to move and not allowing him to drop music how he want to drop music. Yeah, it looks, it looks were those weird. any... Were those things that that, that 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 are different from now? Where now you feel a little bit more free, or like just tell me what's changed? That as a fan, I could be like, okay, shit, about to be different. For sure, I feel good to be free, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. In short, they all basically felt handicapped instead of empowered by good music and like they were not receiving the attention they were promised when they were originally signed. On top of that, Kanye was spiraling into all his BS on a daily basis. Yep. You hear about slavery for 400 years? For 400 years? That sounds like a choice. <laughs> Basically, designer felt left in the dark, and to top this off, he started going through some personal problems with his family. In specific, his father's health began to deteriorate, which seems to have destroyed him mentally. At the time, he recalls that he had no way to get into contact with Kanye West, and it seems like he felt hopeless in the face of losing many people who meant the world to him. From here, he would release less and less music and begin to lose relevance at a very fast pace, as the hype of Panda and Timmy Turner had long died down. To make matters worse, his mental health would continue to decline, as he would sadly lose his father and grandfather within the same year. In 2018, he would release an EP called LOD, an act wow hey losing a father and a grandfather losing a parent and a grandparent at the same time that's tough that's tough i'm not gonna go into the live stories right now that'll be like later on later on in uh in the years if i'm still put putting out content if i'm still putting out content I, i'll tell you about it but bro that's that's crazy that's crazy, man. Acronym for Life of Designer, which would receive a fraction of the attention as his previous album. Now, now have you felt pressure? Because you know, which I think, I think, I think LOD was way better than than uh, the album. I forgot the album name. New English, yeah. Is way better than New English album. Panda was a number one record. It was a big record. Hey, and hey. It was hard to catch another one. <laughs> Do you feel like you kind of had to go backwards? Because you come out, you put a record out, it blows up. So it's like you get a lot of perks that a lot of new artists don't get. But then the ne when the next records come out and they don't pop as big, then you got to like really go on the grind kind of. Nah, it's not really good. Are just you still with good music? Heck yeah, of course, man. All day, man. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I just was talking to Push about getting a puppy, you know what I'm saying? It's like he was always putting on a nice face for the camera. Don't get me wrong, 
He had made his money, but it still hurts to not get that next hit, no matter how hard you try, and know that every single day. Hey, but did he did he invest that in real estate though? Like he was still making money off of buying and then like renting out properties. I remember hearing about it during COVID. I was like, he he's still making money, bro. He's still making good money, man. He's smart. He's like one of the. He's smart. Mm -hmm. He invested that money. He invested it and made more money. He's an entrepreneur. That makes sense. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But it's your dream. You got popular. I think if the tide's not rolling your way, I think it's time to dip. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you convinced me that I'm wrong. Go ahead and post your thoughts in the comments. Um, I really do read all the comments if y'all don't believe it. And I will literally... I would literally like every single one of your comments. I just don't reply to a lot of things, so <laughs> that's that's the only thing. But yeah. Today you're just sliding like a car going backwards on a hill into irrelevance. And he would mostly stay silent for the next couple of years, leaving good So his name had really cooled off. From here he would release singles independently from his new record label LOD. And this was around the time that COVID hit and the world essentially shut down. And like many other artists, it drove him further into irrelevance, as most people felt a serious lack of creative inspiration during this time for being stuck inside all day. And it wasn't until 2022 when he would make headlines yet again after the death of his friend and fellow rapper PMB Rock in September of last year. What? And then only around a month later, tragedy would once again strike with the death of Migos group member Takeoff, who was also his very good friend. This news would result in what appeared to be a mental breakdown from designer, who would announce he was done with rapping. I swear to God, it said ain't nothing. I'm done rap. I'm done rap. This version of me is done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. I took take off, bro. It's done. Y'all wanted it. It's over. I can't live like this no more. I'll be rock. I'll be take off. It's truly sad to see the effects these deaths had on him, and it's easy to see how everything spiraled so quickly. And I, I felt like for a while there, like you kind of Again, I'll go through this to another another time. But yeah, bro, I do I do understand that pain, but sometimes. But honestly, when when that happened to me, bro, when it happened to me, it just made me want to drive. It just it just sparked something in me, bro. I was it didn't matter of what I was doing. And what the fuck, rich the kid. Rich the Kid. I haven't heard a Rich the Kid song since he put out New Freezer. That nigga died fast. <laughs> that motherfucker died fast. Oh my god. I mean, he made Plug Walk, but the New Freezer was his. I mean, like, Plug Walk, Plug Walk was mid. Yeah, I say mid. Because I heard Blood Walk by 6 9 before that. And I was like, huh, this shit feels pretty nice. So I heard the snippet of Blood Walk before fucking uh, Rich the Kid came out with Plug Walk. So, I mean, that was at the time where I was a really big 6 9 fan. A really big 6 9 fan. And I really do regret that. But it really don't matter to me no more. I mean, my past is the past. You fuck is about the present and the future. That's what changes history, the present and the future. Well, uh, let's continue. Kind of might have been done with music, man. Yeah, but uh, uh, we um, hey, I wanna uh, wanna pin me, man. I had wanna losing like three friends in a month and all that shit, big cat. 
count on three word it just like you know what i mean hit me so obviously at this point designer has had a promising but very underwhelming career and for someone who really came into the game all about positivity and manifestation it's sad to see that he never really felt that same embrace from the industry shout out little yachty rick ross you dig what i'm saying shout out my mans man everybody who's out here who's just turning up man jay chris man coming out of brooklyn young guy and just everybody man y'all know how we do it man yeah this happens to a lot of rappers who seem to really want that acceptance from him pop and when they pop off but don't get that love it really hurts them you like what did you learn mm. from your previous label situation Logic. that you you can apply to your career now what i'm moving with now is just really just like just a team you know what i mean just see you know what i'm saying like word you know what i mean respectfully yeah. you know what i mean to not no offense to the other team that i was with former team i was with but just the team love you know what i'm saying it's more of a like compassion it's more of a like we we talk together mornings they checking in you know what i'm saying it's bigger than just music with them you know what i mean it's a family combine that with losing several mm. loved ones and it's no surprise that his mental health took a serious hit still he was back grinding trying to make another anthem and now we fast forward all the way to today where designer has been charged with indecent exposure while thirty thousand feet in the air you see he was flying from tokyo what 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 what? The fall designer Kanye intro. Leaving good. Indecent exposure. What the fuck? 11, 11 minutes 41 seconds, bro. At 11 minutes and 41 seconds, he talked about indecent exposure. I wish that could have been in the beginning. That should have been in the beginning. After after we you introduce the artist and like why like what what the incident was around like right here, like around like right here somewhere. Like he got he got something about indecent exposure. And then after that, then you break down what the fuck was going on in his life to lead up to it. But it is what it is. Go well, back to the state. That just hit me in a whole different way. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and they caught this man choking his chicken. Flight attendants on the plane noticed what he was doing, and when they asked him to stop, he said no. This resulted in a misdemeanor, and obviously a very embarrassing arrest for the fallen rapper. In response to this, he tweeted out, For the past few months I have not been okay, and I've been struggling to come to terms with what is going on. While overseas for a concert I performed at, I had to be admitted into a hospital, I was not thinking clearly, they gave me meds, and I had to hop on a plane home. I am ashamed of my actions that happened on that plane i landed back in the states and i'm admitting myself into a facility to help me i'll be canceling all of my shows and any obligations until further notice mental health is real guys please pray for me if you're not feeling like yourself please get help let's go ahead and say a prayer for good man Cause Lord have mercy, you need Jesus. You need all types of Jesus. You need country Jesus, you need black Jesus, you need white Jesus, you need all them Jesus. Even though there's only one Jesus, you need them all. Lord have mercy. Bro, I, I've tried. Okay, so I've drank and I've smoked before. The only reason why it's not for me is because literally if you have me get drunk or smoking usually you instead of instead of like you see how i'm like kind of energetic and i talk a lot about random shit and i can go to switch on the instant to a different subject and stuff like that me when i'm drunk or high it's literally like this I'm, i'll slouch down and then i'll stare up in the space like this Literally the last time I, I got drunk and high, well I got it at the same time. I was cross I was cross I was seeing waves. You know how how on a TV screen I, this is gonna be this is gonna be this might not hit some of y'all, but it's gonna hit me and a couple of other people. 
because us 2,000 babies literally watch TV and sometimes you had that little the little waves on the TV screen you know how every now and again you get the wave on the TV screen with the box TV yeah that's that's what I would see but it will see it I would see it all in like my point of view it was like a camera and it was just seeing waves and then I said to my friends I'm never doing this shit again don't ask me to do this shit again and it was like you know it's cool it's cool bro we see you stuck so yeah I'm never I'm never doing that again so uh, that's the reason why I don't do it but it's totally crazy that your your first instinct after being meted up is to take out your <coughs> and stroke the ever living life out of it on the airplane. Man, there's a bathroom, bro. There's a bathroom. There's a bathroom on a plane. If you had that certain, if you had the urge, go to the bathroom and do it, bro. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my gosh, it, that that's crazy. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy, bro. And while what he did was obviously disgusting. It's sad to see how far this man has fallen. He's always been someone who tried to promote positivity, and it's clear that all might have been some sort of coping mechanism for the demons that he's been fighting. I just really hope at this point he does get the help he needs. I mean, obviously someone doing something that thoughtless, with as much to lose as designer, must really be in a dark place. But y'all let me know what you guys think about his career at this point. Do you think he will ever break past that one hit wonder status once and for all? Or do you think this will officially be a wrap on his career? As always, I do want to thank you guys for watching today's video. I don't think it's going to be a, the, the end of his career. But I do think that he's going to have something to really fall back on. He's going to have to have something to really push forward of what the fuck is happening. Because that's crazy as hell. But with that said, you guys, um, it's about that time we conclude the video. So, it's been a good one. It's your boys, Little Jackson. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace. Look out for the next, the other video, bro. It's coming right after it. Maybe not right, right after it. It's going to be 12 to 12 and then 4 o'clock. It's going to be the, the post times for a little bit. All right. With that said. Peace. You have a great day.